I was told off yesterday. I made a video in my previous one, my previous video. I was told off. Um, I was walking around Worthing and I was uh, looking at, uh, I think the theme of it was called It's Our Fault. It's Our Fault uh, that we have no pride. Our standards have slipped. And um, I was told off because I was making sweeping statements, of course, uh, because I can't speak for every single person. I was broad brushing my thoughts about where we were in England at this particular time. And, and suddenly I had an email from somebody very angry saying, oh no, but wait, I'm a craftsman. I work with my hands and I've got my neighbors in and we watch your video and we're incredibly upset with it. And uh, well, I'm sorry, you're very upset with it. And he said, oh, and well, you have lost subscribers to the channel. And I thought, well, okay, it's always, always nice to have a flounce, isn't it? Um, so I, I'm not really trying to address that, except that one of the things he said, you can barely talk, you know, your uh, hypocrisy. There we were. I saw you were doing a video of you painting your door and you put it on in such a slip slap slap shod fashion. And you even admitted it yourself saying, oh, you couldn't be bothered to do it nicely. Um, as in, I couldn't, that's true, I couldn't be bothered to sand the door down and do all that because um, I, I, I actually found that uh, the paint that I was using or the paint that I'd used in the past had lasted something like 20 years and I only just slapped it on and it was amazing. There it is on the south facing door with the full sun on it for 20 years and it worked very well. I didn't think it needed all the extra stuff. The point of it was I was smartening up the door, even if I didn't do the job properly because I'm not a painter, I'm not an actual craftsman, even though I felt that the, uh, the paint, wherever it's made, did a good job. And, and I thought that was a bit of a, uh, a, a poor example. Um, you could, could it, much easier would have been picked up and said, look, your garden is atrocious. Your front garden facing the world is absolutely appalling. It's full of weeds. And it is. Now, you could have, could have picked me up on that, but you didn't. Um, and my front garden is full of weeds, doesn't look very nice. However, it is full of wildlife and there are butterflies and bees that go in those um, wild flowers. So uh, it's difficult, you know, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve a, a certain look or are you trying to achieve a certain effect such as allowing nature to have a little hopping stone, which is what I was trying to do. Now, if I, only I could put more flowers in and more stuff that would attract more bees and, and butterflies, but I'm not a gardener. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I'm very ignorant in a lot of things, as you may have noticed, and a lot, I'm sure a lot of people will have noticed in my videos. I'm incredibly ignorant. And, but the thing is, I think people, <laughs> they get a little bit confused with me because they think that because I maybe um, speak in a certain way, with a certain accent, um, with um, a certain style, or a, a, you might call it a flair, I wouldn't possibly say that, that I am <clears throat> perhaps being too arrogant or too egotistical or too opinionated. And people obviously don't like that too much. But I am actually also the first to hold my hands up and say, look, I had a comprehensive a 1970s comprehensive school education um, and I left at 15. I was never encouraged to go on. That I was a bit of a dunce at school and I was never encouraged to go on and learn things or even take a craft or to follow the direction I wanted to. It was like, no, he's a, he's a bit of a no-hoper. They'd made the decision, get, get him in a job and I went and worked in a printing company. And then I later on did I train in mime and I went on numerous acting exercises, um, what do you call it, Less, not lessons, acting courses, that's the word, courses. And everything that I've done is I've either read in books, apart from the odd acting stuff, has been uh, self-taught, which means that you, you learn things in a very different way than being influenced by teachers or university people or who are passing on. Uh, information. You're learning in a very different fashion and you come to opinions, I think, in a very different way when you, when you teach yourself very much. The sort of, you rely on yourself because it, you feel like you can't rely on other people or opportunities haven't been thrust at you. 
And so I think there's, there is a certain mock arrogance or a mock egotism or something that in order to get over the lack of confidence and the lack of knowledge and the lack of, you know, all of that, you, perhaps I do overcompensate and people think, well, he's very outspoken, isn't he? Um, but also I do try to talk the truth as I see the world. And people will disagree with you. Of course they will. And I don't have, I have no problem with people disagreeing with you, but some people can be incredibly angry and uh, nasty about their disagreement. And that's one of the things I think, you know, is talking about our standards have slipped. And I was talking about service, wasn't I, in yesterday's thing about uh, you used to go to a train station and people would be very dressed. You'd have porters, they'd carry your bags, they would call you sir. People don't call you sir very often these days. Maybe they do. Maybe in my world I haven't seen that as much. I uh, used to go into the little corner, not the little corner shop, but the, well, it was a sort of a corner shop back in the old days and there was a person behind the counter. You didn't have the supermarkets. You went to the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker and, and people served you and they knew you in the community. But that's sort of gone because we've got bigger and expanded. And one of the comments this uh, gentleman said in his email to me uh, uh, was that houses you know, the houses are being built that I was complaining that they all look the same and they all look like they were on some sort of either very poor holiday camp or a prison camp, I think is what I used, uh, because they all just look very uniform, made very cheaply and very meanly. And, and he said in his email, they've been built like that for a reason. Well, of course, everything's built for a reason. Everything, nothing just happens. It's like, oh, blimey, look at that. There's a house just popped up for no reason whatsoever. Of course, everything has a reason. I mean, it stands to reason that they have a reason. Um, but he didn't explain what that reason was. That I, I think he probably meant that, you know, for cheapness so that people put that. But the problem is that all these houses are not actually that uh, affordable anyway. It wouldn't be so bad, these uh, rabbit hutches, if they were affordable houses, but they tend not to be that affordable. I mean, the, um, the cost of them uh, is uh, astronomical, but um, there you are. So I, 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 wanted, I want to celebrate what we've done in the past, and I would love to see us doing some of that in the future, this sort of made in England stuff that we can be proud of, because we were at one time a proud nation. And I think when you're a proud nation, you dress nicely, you present yourself nicely, you have pride. And I suppose what I was trying to say in that piece, clumsily as it is, because I'm, I am no poet laureate or anything like that, I was trying to put over the fact that in broad strokes, we have, I feel, and it's only my own personal feeling, and, and my personal feeling is only my personal, people have no reason to get angry because I have an opinion, my own humble opinion, but people do get, people do seem to get incredibly angry if you have an opinion which is different to theirs, uh, which is very strange because the world is full of people who have opinions and we should all be able to have an opinion and be able to voice our opinion and other people go, well, that's an interesting opinion. That's very interesting. I disagree with it or I agree with this part of it. I don't agree with that bit. Or maybe I can persuade you in bits of your argument that you're perhaps missing a point or you're not quite right. Maybe we can debate it and maybe we can chat it. Maybe I'll give you this much ground and you could give me that ground. Walk in my sh shoes for a mile and I'll walk in your shoes for a mile. And then maybe we both find that actually we're both right. And there's elements, you know, rather than just going, well, I'm very cross, I'm very angry, you've offended me and you're wrong and you're an idiot. You know, that seems to be the take that people have these days. And that seems to be a thing that has changed in this world, that you're wrong and if you don't agree with me, you're an idiot. And I think in the olden days, people would listen. They, you know, depending on the, the type of person. I mean, I'm sure, again, broad statements. But I think we were proud of our country. We were proud of our nation. Um, and we, we had things that we shared in the old days, didn't we? We, we shared customs and traditions and we shared a, a faith, a, a countrywide faith. We may not all have adhered to it. We may not all have actually gone to church and got down on the pews and, and done our praying, but we're sort of kind of happy to have a church in our community. And we were quite happy to have the vicar cycling round on his bicycle 
uh, Derek Nimmo style and, um, you know, just spreading the world and, and people chatting to one another and knowing the community and working together. And, and we were proud of some of the objects that we used to make. They weren't all just coming in on container ships from another, from the other side of the world made by cheaper labor. We, I mean, people may not have been happy with their working conditions and things, and we may have had the union movements to try and improve all of that, but we, we made stuff and there was something about having something that was made in your country that, that made you proud. Now this gentleman who got in touch with me said he was a craftsman and they do make things. So, so I, I, you know, he was the exception to my sweeping statement and he ought to be very proud and he probably was and he got rather angry and he hit his keyboard rather too swiftly, I think, possibly. And because of that, he said his things that he said because he was incensed because he was obviously proud of what he does. And that's, you know, that's good. And I'm not arguing, I have no argument um, with him other than his anger at me. I, I you know, I, he's probably a very nice gentleman when not angry sending out missives. So here's, here's a potty, just for a change of subject. Here's a potty um, made in England. It, there's a little sticker on here. It's called, hang on, I have to take my glasses off to see because of the old eyes, acid proof, jury registered, made in England. It says, oh, you can't see it, but it, it does actually say that. Uh, made in England. And it's an old, one of these enamel, enamel potties. Uh, I'd love to get a, China one to have under the under the bed, you know, and um, it's nice to be able to have a piss in a potty that's made in your own country. Rather, not that we do that anyway, you know. Is Armitage Shanks is that a British company? So do they still do the potteries in England? So I don't know. I'm as I say, 1970s comprehensive education. Um, at, years ago, years ago. That's the trouble. Here's another thing. The lovely Linda Kane, one of my wonderful viewers. Very kindly has got us, I don't know what, how many pieces there are. It's like something like a 36 tea piece set or a tea set piece. What, 36 piece tea set. There you go. That'll do. Um, it is actually glued because it was slightly broken on the handle here, which is a shame, and on the little knobbly bit up here. This is about uh, 80 years old or 90 years old, sort of 1930s. Beautiful thing, um, but made in England. It says on the bottom, Royal Cauldron, which is a lovely name, isn't it? You can imagine the witches around there. English witches, mind you, English witches, some old hags going around um, doing all that eye of newt, dog of fish, bone of nose and all of that. Um, established in 1774, made in England. And this is Victoria. This is a set called Victoria. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful. And uh, ideal for when Julia and I are doing our whimsies, which we should be doing some more of those very soon. Um, for those that don't know, by the way, I'm doing uh, this month in October, you know how some people do like, it's that thing in November where they grow a moustache for whatever reason it is. Um, I'm doing vlogging every day in one shot, which is why you're not getting close-ups. And I can't show you these signs because the camera is fixed focus. So if I do that, A, it goes into the dark, and B, it's out of focus and it's blurred. I'm not using the autofocus. Now you could say, but Richard, you're not using an English camera, are you? These cameras are made in wherever they're made, China or tai Taiwan. Is it Taiwan? Taifu. No, not Taifu. That's a different thing altogether. Um, and uh, another product here from the past. Look at this. Know what that is? This is an old washboard, Acme. Well, a lovely name that is, Acme. British, it says stamped on there. I don't know if you can see that, British. So I don't know where it was made specifically, but it's British, you know, it's still something to be proud of. A glass, you would wash your clothes on here. Isn't that amazing? Um, I love all that. I love all that. I would love, I would love to have an antique shop. I've got nowhere to put all the stuff really, but it would be lovely to have an antique shop and understand antiques. Uh, mainly from this country. I would love to have a, a house. Well, I, and it's one of the ambitions I have with this house, unless Julia and I move, of course, uh, and move in together somewhere, which is also, you know, a, a dream that we've got. But it would be lovely to have a house in which you just have everything that's made in England, a made in England house with no foreign things. How much 
How far could you go with that idea, that concept? Is it possible to find something where everything is made in England? And of course, you, you know, you may say, ah, oh, but Richard, you know, some of the, the things that go into some of these things that say they're made in England are actually from foreign, you know, different woods from different parts of the world or uh, different um, plastics or different, I don't know, materials. Materials have come, they've been dug out of the, the world in Bulgaria, for all you know. And, it's, and you go, well, yes, but if the design is here and the manufacturing is here and these things have been put together here, I would still class that as made in England. And if you, of course, if you could use English uh, trees, wood, uh, materials, then so much the better, of course. Um, it's just that whole thing where everything has been made somewhere else and come in. Um, now, of course, I am, as like anybody, I'm going to end up being a hypocrite because that's what one would like to and it's what one would love to see. But we're all hypocritical in, you know, we all say one thing and then do something else because life is like that. We can't all live exactly to the word that we say, but we can have ambitions. And that's really what I'm trying to uh, allude to here is that there are ambitions to have things that are English and to be, I would love to be proud again of this country. I would love to see the, the country smarten itself up. Now, one of the things that I think this chap was saying, he says, but those Victorian houses, you, you saw there was hundreds to a room and they were, they were slums and all that. Isn't it amazing though, that those old slums, that some of them that had hundreds of people living in there, you know, he's, he's sort of talking as if I didn't know that. Um, but now those, those places where you had, you know, five to a room, are now worth so much money that people who are down there on the lowest denomination couldn't even afford to put five people in the room. That's the sad part, isn't it? That we've, we've turned these wonderful buildings that now suddenly have enormous um, value connected to them, which is, which is so sad. It's such a shame. So I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the answer is. I just think that, you know, when you look at the past, there's elements of the past. I'm not saying that we need to step back into the past. I'm not saying that. People often, as soon as you sort of look at the past, people say, oh, Richard, you can't step back. You're just nostalgic. You, you can't do that. You've got to look forward. But I, I say this so many times and people don't really get it. They don't seem to understand it. Maybe it's because of my bad education. I can't articulate it. Maybe I'm thick. Maybe I'm stupid. I admit I probably am. I'm the first person to say I am stupid and thick and, and everything I say may be completely impossible and you can be sitting there with your arms folded going, Richard, it's all pie in the sky. And I have no problem with, with you thinking that. Um, but just allow me to say the things I want to say, you know, uh, allow me to say it. I, I would very much allow you to say it, although I do turn the comments off and that's a different thing. Um, but what I'm, when I'm looking back, I'm looking back because there's things that were great that in our progression, in this modern world, we seem to have forgotten. We seem to have almost just slammed the door on the past and many people are even rewriting the past and making stuff up that wasn't there, changing the, the, the colour of people's skin um, and making out our traditions weren't what they were or that everything that was in the past was so bad we can't uh, look at it. I don't understand that because that's, that is a lie. We have too much of that this lying going about by certain fractions, factions of the society. And, and that's not right. But there's essences from the past. We, we should learn from the past. We should learn and, and not throw the baby out with the bathwater, which is, I always say, instead of just shutting the door on it, there were so many things. And so the standards, the pride, the, the feeling of belonging, of being part of something, of, of looking on the floor and going, oh, look, there's some litter on the floor. Let's just pick that up because, and put it in the bin. Because we don't want to live, surely, in a civilised, sophisticated society that we all call ourselves. We don't want to live in a, in a scummy place. We want to 
be able to pick up the litter. And it's not a shameful thing to do, to pick something up and put it in the bin, or to smarten oneself up, or to be proud of things and, and offer a wonderful service. Instead of just thinking, what's the minimum amount of money that I need to spend? And what's the maximum amount of profit that I need to get from all of this? Because what do people do with all that profit? What do they do with it? Do they plow it back and give it to the workers, give it to make the price cheaper for the customers? What do they do with all that? You know, in the end, what's, what's it all about, Alfie? Anyway, I just thought I would address, address that uh, in today's video and thank you for watching if you have. And uh, I've managed to wash myself, not myself, I have washed myself, but uh, my cups. And I'm going to have a cup of coffee and I hope that you have a lovely day, whatever it is. I should actually have a cup of tea with that lovely tea set, so you never know. So thank you for watching. Take care, look after yourselves and um, enjoy life if you can.